Welcome to ASMTG, and I'm doing something a little different in today's video. So this is actually going to be a two-parter. I've had a lot of people ask me the question, I don't get to see every single one of your games going up to Mythic. So right now I'm at Diamond level three. So right, we would need to have 12 wins to actually get there. So that's too many wins just for one video, and you know there has to be some losses in that journey as well. So I wanna show kind of my journey and kind of decks I usually choose when I wanna make that final push up into Mythic. So a lot of times, right, I'm recording in all sorts of different decks, they get decent win rates, or maybe some of them don't, and I then have to eventually rank up anyway. So I do use other decks to rank up, and this happens to be the one I'm choosing for this month. Last month, I was choosing probably humans, and that's usually my most common one, but I think Soldiers is in such a great spot right now. And I have to give a special shout out to MTG Brew Lab, because he's been playing Soldiers, and he's in love with Azorius Soldiers and Mono White. Now, I slightly disagree with him with Mono White. I think Azorius Soldiers is just where it's at and I'll explain a little bit more why later but I am hoping to work with him later and maybe pilot his mono white one and he's going to help me out with that so stay tuned and maybe we'll get a little collab with that one and if you haven't checked out his channel go ahead check out the link in the description for his as well but he at least got me thinking soldiers are definitely suited to do well right now so my version of Azoria soldiers is different than his please check out his video on his as well but what I'm going with is just a creature base I'm not putting in counters I'll talk about all sorts of cards we could be adding in here, but I am not finding still too many domain. I'm still not finding too many control decks. Now, again, when that actually becomes more like I would say 15, 20% of the meta that I'm running into, then I want more counter spells because then you're just forced to actually counter that sweeper. Because you'll see with games like this, if they actually have that, it's really hard to come back from that big sweeper. So let's talk about the cards. One of the huge ones is Warden in the Inner Sky. This plays so nice just as a good one drop, but also being able to tap three things down, get your scry, and then in any of those mono white matchups that we go against or another soldier matchup, the air is the key. That's how we win. Win. In a mono white matchup, yes, there's the Brutal Cathar battle that's going to be going on, but then there's also what happens with the battlefield. Often nobody wants to attack because there's no good trades. And so now if we have a few things that could actually go to the air, even better. Then if this thing also has got vigilance on it, it's really hard for them to stop that. And the reason I personally like Azoria soldiers way more than the mono white soldier decks is because of Harbin. This is just your big bomb over the top. If we get any muddied up battlefield, as soon as we have five soldiers, boom, we swing in. We basically win the game right then and there. Now, a few choices, the Denic and the Sentinel. Three and three I went with. I like the Sentinel because if people have spot removal, that's still around, or the occasional Brutal Cathar that's targeting something, right? Save my creature, and it gives me another one of those flying options. Denic then is here for two reasons. One, life gang against mono red. Mono red is still our most prevalent deck out there with more than 20% of our meta. And then the other one is when this thing does die, at least I'm getting that three, two flyer. Once again, I'm talking all about it, taking to the air, and that's how we swing through when we actually get our victories. Now, when I start to see control and domain come back though, I will cut these. I'm not sure the exact level I'll go with, but I know I need to get rid of four cards because I have two options in my opinion, either make disappear or protect the negotiators. And I'm leaning towards protect the negotiator as my counter spell of choice. Reason for that is typically we always have a few creatures on the battlefield. And the whole reason you want protect the negotiators is to deal with the sweeper. That's the number one target. And so if I have no creatures, I'm already behind anyway. So I think the added value of being able to get that extra one one is worth it in a deck like this. And so that's why I like Protect the Negotiators over Make Disappear in this deck. And like I said, as soon as I start to see more of the meta being control, domain, things like that, more sweepers out there, I would want to put them in. Until that happens, this is the version I'm going to run with. My Lord of Choice is going to be the Veteran. Now, you have another option where you could go with the Copper Coat Vanguard. Now, yes, it bumps up all your humans, but the nice thing is it gives ward, okay? Ward is the taxation method you could potentially go with soldiers as well. My only problem with this is not all of our creatures are necessarily always going to be humans. So an example is my roaming throne. This comes down, I wanna name soldier. You technically could name human because if you look at the things that it's getting the triggers are all humans as well, but then I'm not gonna also be running the veteran. 
For me, I like the veteran for a couple reasons. Number one, keep everything soldiers. We call it a soldier deck. Number two, I really love that plus one, plus one, because now things like my recruitment officer actually can be a blocker. It could block anytime they have like a squee and they pump out a one, one. Now I could actually block those one ones. The other thing is really nice is we could actually exile this from our graveyard to pump up the entire squad. So that's why I lean with that a little bit over the Vanguard. But if we're getting a lot of spot removal that you're running into, Copper Coat Vanguard could go in. Then you could also go with a taxation plan. Thalia is also a soldier. So if we need to maybe tax them a little bit more, make them pay extra on all their spells, we're starting to run into a lot of mono black or Rakdos mid range, things like that. Those are good cards that you could substitute as well. What's nice about this Azoria soldier list is there are so many great soldiers that I currently have in it and so many I have in that sideboard that shows you, you could swap things out depending on the meta, depending on your personal taste. Now, when it goes to our three drop spot, Strike Force Officer gives us so much value. Number one, it's a card draw engine. It's gonna be spinning out a bunch of one ones, which are potentially two twos. Then with the Roaming Throne, we're gonna now get two of those one ones off of it. Seed Veteran. This helps if they have any of those early sweepers. So something like a depopulate, great. We at least are gonna have a few creatures left over. It doesn't help with exile effects. But then the other nice thing is, if you have a roaming throne, you now are getting two counters. You start throwing that on some of your flyers and those are gigantic flyers getting through to end the game very quick. And then of course, the absolute nightmare for your opponent, a double brutal Cathar off of this thing. So roaming throne fits very nicely and it really helps you curve out with this deck. But overall, the major thing with this is yes, we could aggro, we could beat them without it, but the big ace in the hole is the Harbin, and that's why I always go with four copies. You want this thing. So often, just in those creature matchups, you still are gonna end up with five soldiers, great. Now we have our simple victory to go over the top. Talking about a few of your other sideboard cards, if you don't have all the rares, maybe you have the Frontliner. No way it's as good as the Warden, though. You have a Cathar Commando, which could deal artifacts and enchantments. Again, I don't think it's as strong as what we have. We already talked about that. Dust Legion Duelist, the only thing we have for counters is the Valiant Veteran if we get it out of the graveyard and our Siege Veteran. So for me, it's just not worthwhile. I do love the Vigilance. You like a little bit of card draw, but I prefer my Denic and my Sentinel over it. Talked about our counter spells. Oh, I guess Guardian New Bedalia. I could see a one, maybe two of in this because when you are dealing with things where you can't necessarily take to the air and you need to find your threats, being able to actually enlist this and get the scry and invincible is pretty nice. So this is maybe a one or two of you might want to put in. Resonant re Reinforcements, again, that's a way to go wide, use the Harbin. I just think we have better ways to go wide with it and it's no longer needed. And L's. Elspeth is good if we have any type of control matchup. And the idea for me is, I think it goes in a mono white soldiers, but I like Roaming Throne just a little bit better. But once again, I could see a maybe a one, two of, you drop the Roaming Throne a little bit, but I think you're gonna see in some gameplay, this thing is really gonna prove it deserves to be a four of. And then finally, you have Mural. And it's the same logic here. If I have Roaming Throne, I think that's enough, okay? It's really hard to kill. The thing with Mural is a lot of times you drop this, they bounce it, they kill it. But Roaming Throne, when you drop this, it's so hard for them to kill. If I'm on curve, now they need to have four mana to be able to pay that War 2 to actually be able to take care of it. So, like I said, lots of good options we have here. This is just the version I'm gonna go with, and this is gonna be my version I'm gonna do the entire run all the way up to Mythic. So, this video, you're gonna get to see how a certain number of games, just about half of them, and then really make sure you stay tuned for tomorrow's video where I'm gonna finally finish off this run up to Mythic. So let's go ahead and jump into the gameplay. All right, that's a keeper, right? We got a couple lords, we got at least a removal here. Ooh, and they had a mulligan. This is mono red too. They hate a Denic. Oh, they hate a Denic. Question is, do you have it? Do you have the lightning strike right on cue? Because if you don't, it's gonna be too much life gain for them to be able to just come back from right away. Oh yeah, this is a no block. Oh, they don't even attack with a Swiss spear. That's super surprising. All right, yeah, we'll just, I mean, they can still monstrous rage and they'll be able to take this out. We'll still attack in, we, we'll gain the life. They're gonna lose their Denic.
Yeah, I still think that was still a fine trade for us. We gained the life that we needed. Yeah. And do we just play our flyer now or... Go with our next Lord. Next turn, we'll be able to double drop. So, all right, let's swing in. All right, they're going to take that. And then we'll play this. So next turn, we can just double drop Brutal Cathar and our veteran. So now you would definitely want your lightning strike for this. But I think I've now become the beatdown. Ooh, gain control. Nice. Okay, we're at 12. I still am going to say I'm the beatdown. We'll save the Brutal Cathar still then. Okay. There's too much value there. Uh, we'll get in for... Yeah, I like it like that. At least leaves... Oh, I guess we should have just attacked for the 3-2. I mean, we're clearly beat down. But this at least gives us, after our blocks, we could draw a card. And that extra 3 damage wasn't going to be the thing that was going to win it right now anyway. Just a pretty easy sweep of this deck. Yeah. Nothing else they could have done there. That gaining three life, trading off their creature. Ooh, cannot keep that. All right. Uh, too much land, but at least we have the two, three, four drop. All right. Easy to just get rid of a plane. Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess just island doesn't really matter. All right, so probably Mono White Humans. Oh, it looks like they had to lose a card as well. So normally we have a really good matchup when we go against Mono White Humans just because by the end we end up flying over the top. But if they have their Brutal Cathars and we don't, that definitely will shift things. Okay, nice draw. All right, so Soldiers. So right now though, we have no blocks we like. Seed Veteran comes down. It'll grow our other Veteran. Okay, so they don't even... They missed their third land drop as well. Skrell. They should swing in. Wow. Full aggression. I almost wanted to block the Vanguard there, but... Really, maybe I should have just done Brutal Cathar to... Well, I guess it wouldn't even matter, right? No, I could have gotten rid of their veteran with the Brutal Cathar. After this, there's nothing I could do about it. Yeah, that was probably a mistake. Well, Roaming Throne, actually. Hold on. I have yet to try that. So we target the Skrelv, and we target something else. In response, they give it protection. We only get the Skrelv. I think that's how that works. And their whole thing right now is they could just be missing that third land, waiting on their Brutal Cathar. It's definitely one of those matchups where one missed land drop could just be the difference of the whole thing. It's so tight between mono white humans and then soldiers. The only thing is, like, when it doesn't become that Brutal Cathar matchup or if they're running ossifications, then it's all about both of our boards get really big, and that's when soldiers gets that slight advantage because we're going to get the Harbin, we're going to fly over and get the victory. Give protection? If not, I'm not blocking because you know they have uh, a Ganjo, one legendary creature. There's no way they're going to tap this right th now, though, right? Super interesting. How they do it okay i mean this is our moment we double spell two but i really want the throne down i don't know if this is getting a little too greedy but the fact they did it once well they won't do it again now though huh because now throne has no color all right so where do we want these counters this has ward two
Brutal Cathar is probably going to come over there. So let's just spread out these counters right now. All right, we still pass. If they get that land, we know the Brutal Cathar is coming, though. Okay. Adeline. All right, there's... No, let's see. I was going to say, there's something they might actually give protection from, but because we have our artifact creature. All right. Soldier. We're going to go Brutal Cathar to get the double triggers. First. We'll do it like this. Just let him protect it. Because we won't be able to get it. Alright. Now we get a recruitment officer down. So this still can't be hit with Brutal Cathar. I might want to put both counters here on at least this round. Because if they play a Brutal Cathar, oh, actually they take care of the veteran. Hmm. And that was a mistake too. I should have played this land so I could have pumped up the squad next time. Ooh, little area errors like this we do not like. We'll go here. I'm just gonna double it here. It makes it so Adeline at least won't be able to get through. All right, now we'll pass. And we want it to go tonight. Ooh, a siege veteran of their own. All right. Their squad. Well, now actually. Oh, and another Skrelf. All right, so that is eight power. I will block, I think, with my veteran and officer. Yep. This way, we're gonna get a couple creatures. We could then get this out of the graveyard, get everybody back. Oh yeah, look at these triggers. Beautiful. All right, that only costs five mana. I think I would rather do it that way, right? This is just the better play. Oh, okay, they're done. Cause we're gonna take this out. Everybody's gonna get the plus one, plus one counters there. Good matchup. Unfortunately for them, they were a little mana screwed and we did we technically won the Brutal Cathar matchup, which is the absolute key on things like this. But because of their Skrelves, it did make it tricky. I think the turn they actually tapped out, I shouldn't have been greedy. I should have just got rid of the Vanguard right then and there, then got the throne down. And then I could have started playing the night day cycle with that. All right, good first two matchups so far. We will keep this, this is looking nice. Right, turn one, recruitment officer. Turn two, double warden. Oh, turn three, strike force officer. Yes, please. Mount mono red. All right, sounds good. Um, you know what? I'll let that hit. Let's go, soldier. So so far we got mono red, mono white humans right back into mono red. So we're getting just the most popular decks and we've been able to at least handle the first two. Oh yeah we'll take a harbin so, ooh lightning strike all right soldier again yeah I know we could be doing a little bit of the beat down but I want to grow these another harbin we will cancel that I would love to be able to double drop next turn. If they do a Godric here, a Squee. Okay, that is, that's bad on us. That's all right, though. Ooh. Siege Veteran is beautiful. Let's go.
Let's just go right here. Just swing in. Get one soldier. Um, no legendary creatures. Do I play? No, not yet. Because if our next draw is a land anyway, it won't matter. If it's something, if it's another two drop and we need to be able to drop it, great. Let's see how they get aggressive. Okay, they attack like this. That tells me... So we're going to go here, here, here. Because I think the Monstrous Rage is coming. So we'll still be able to take down Squee. If we block the Swift Spear, it will still live. All right. So three blockers. We'll also get to draw a card off of this. Yep, just as we expected. So let's go ahead and draw our cards. Another officer is good. All right, and that's totally fine. I know we're at eight. We're getting pretty low, but I think we're gonna, we're gonna be making our comeback here in a minute. All right, let's go Soaring City. Pump our squad. Get a Harbin down. Next turn, we'll be able to just swing in for the victory. Uh, what's best? Let's protect this Harbin, I think. So now the Harbin is outside of Lightning Strike range. And as far as my chump blockers go, it's going to be the Recruitment Officer and the Veteran. Yeah. So... Eight damage would have been really hard for them to push that through. Let's take a quick look. And then my thinking behind my blocking is if we let the veteran and recruitment officer be the blockers, we're going to get one ones out of that deal. And then we're still going to be able to swing through in the air next turn just for the victory. And then putting that counter on the Harbin, let's say you have the lightning strike. And then they wanted to make the game go any longer. By putting this at four toughness and not using it as a blocker, it's going to ensure it lives till next turn. Then we're going to be able to be guaranteed have five soldiers swing over for that victory. So 2-0 versus mono red, 1-0 versus mono white. The most popular decks right now in our format. The thing I've yet to see is Selesnya Enchantments, which is the second highest win rate currently. Don't love this as much. I think... Going first, so I think I'm going to be greedy. Let's go ahead and keep. And I'm just going to hope I'm going to, I'm going to top deck a land next turn. If not, I mean, not worst thing in the world, right? Because what would I rather do turn two? I'd rather just probably play my Harbin, leave up the Sentinel. Question is, are we going to be able to curve out into these roaming thrones? And are we going to be able to find that three drop that these things really benefit from anyway? I might have been a greedy keep. We're going to find out. Right, not, not our best curve. Ooh. Especially if uh, we're going against... Well, I guess two Sentinels are nice if we're going against Azorius Control. Nope, Soldiers on Soldiers. Okay, so they're going with the Creature Land, which I have opted not to use. Um, sure, let's just get a little bigger than them. They right now are going to win this battle, though, if they have their Brutal Cathars. Just like that Mono White matchup, crucial card to have. Okay, and they got it. And you usually don't like to fire it off first unless you have a secondary one. So, okay, we get ours. So we gotta play something. So we pass. Can't let it go to night on them. The huge thing too will be is if I could get Brutakathar down and then we could back it up. So they'll attack for three here, I assume. A Brutal Cathar comes in? Wow. Yeah, I can't pass that up. If you're just going to throw one away like that, I will take that. Oh, this is bad. Um. All right, let's let it go tonight. Okay, so they do have the secondary Brutal Cathar here. 
Only thing that made sense when they threw it away like that and the fact that they played it first, like you'll play it first, but it's usually like towards the end when it's you're in a bad situation. Oh my. Well, we could start getting our flying damage in here at least. All right, we're going to end step. And if they double drop right, we have our sentinel to save whatever creature they go for. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Sentinel end step for the veteran. Then I'll have two four threes, which will really be like their three twos. And let's see if they have the one drop. So here's the risk. No, there's no risk. I, I'm, I'm blocking the Thalia. And then when they double drop, okay. So we are going to take seven. Oh no, shoot. Oh man. We're taking 10 here. Brutal. One block. And now let's see if they have the double drop. No, they don't. Oh my. Um, We need to gain some life. I don't... Can we survive a turn though? So that's, no, that's seven first strike damage. That just kills us. I don't see a way out of this right now. So we have to hold back. We can't even attack. My hope was drop them down to seven. Then when their Brutal Cathar flips, I'll be able to... Mm, yeah, I don't even know if that was going to work. Yeah, us being uh, mana screwed on this one has hurt us, right? Because we have two Brutal Cathars of our own here. And you're going to have these games occasionally. Sometimes, right, you just get the bad lands. We had our opening hand. These were our original two lands we had, which weren't even the best in that situation either. All right, so we got to kill. We kill one Lord, both Lords will die. And this way we're taking six. All right, let's do that. We lose our whole board. And they still have three creatures. So I don't think there's a way to come back from this, especially being at one. And if they have a, a land to activate this flyer. Yeah. All right, GG's, we're done. <laughs> and they didn't even play anything, interesting. Oh, maybe they have a counter spell. No, Resolute. All right. Yeah, these games will happen. Unfortunately, we don't win the mirror. Would have been interesting if, if we got lands as well, right? I mean, the Roaming Thrones, the Brood of Cathars, we really could have maybe started to take advantage here. All right, here we go. I like it. All rare lands, nice little curve. We will keep this. And opponent. All right, here we go. Naming soldier. I mean, realistically, we play any of our lands, they know we're playing soldiers, right? Kind of gives our game plan away right from the start. Ooh. Don't have to do that. We have one in play. I just find it a little easier. All right, get in for three. So we're gonna we're gonna have to go quick 
if this is either Esper Control, if this is Domain, if this is Esper Legends, I think we just have a slightly better chance because they don't have sweepers and we're going to get pretty wide on them. I'm thinking Siege Veteran might be... Mm, no, we have two officers. If I only had one officer, I think I might go Siege Veteran first because I am anticipating some just spot removal. All right. Yeah, I like the Siege Veteran here. If they temporary lockdown, it's gonna be a feels bad. But a temporary lockdown wouldn't prevent anything with the Siege Veteran anyway. So we still don't know though, are you Esper Midrange, are you Esper Legends, or are you Esper Control? We're really hoping it's all but the Esper Control. Just a little easier to beat. So next turn, it's going to be Siege Veteran no matter what. Because next turn, they could 4-drop, they could depopulate. By having at least the Siege Veteran out there, it's going to give us a few 1-1s to get in those final points of damage. Because right now, we have 8 damage that could come through, and that's 9. Leaves us... Okay, there it was. There's their spot removal. So now I'm going to use the Siege Veteran just in case they have the Sweeper right here. Gets them to six. If they have the Sweeper, we at least get the two one ones. Chance is though, they're probably going to be more of the um, Sunfall style deck, right? Depopulate, farewell, you see here and there, but still Sunfall's the number one Sweeper we have. I guess the bigger thing would be a Wandering Emperor would kind of hurt us. Them gaining the life and taking out my 4-3 or 2-2. Two, two. I think taking out the 4-3 right now is their better target. All right. Um, don't want multiple drops here. I just have to think what is best, what to put where. So let's think of damage. Right now, that's three, four, five, if they get rid of this. If I put a counter here, that is six. But then they were gonna gain two anyway. If they get rid of this. So I definitely don't wanna put it on the veteran. I think I'm just going to go Siege Veteran because that's six there. And if you get rid of my Veteran, so if they only have spot removal, I think we could still get out of this. Wandering Emperor is the thing we have to avoid. Or if they have some flash creatures, you need to have two of them or one of them and a spot removal. It's just kind of forcing them to have two things or the Wandering Emperor. All right, bounce. Um, we will actually ditch that. So still six, so they have to have the two answers. Okay, we'll ditch that as well. All right, so they did have to do the two answers right there. So I think... I'm just going to go with the Strike Force Officer. I think this is just a little better because I'm still expecting a Sunfall here. And then after the Sunfall, at least we could double drop. Ooh, okay. It's gonna be Roaming Throne. You know what I just realized too? They could actually counter this because it is a golem. All right, soldier. So this way we get a couple. We get a couple creatures here. And then that's going to enable me to draw a card as well. Wow, they go for the block? Wait, what do they have? 
Exile, oh, nice. All right, so now they have a 5-4. Not at all the deck I was thinking. I should have known that once I saw the Steel Seraph. So 5-4 Lifelinker. But if they want to gain that life, they're going to have to lose their blocker. And if they don't sweep the board, we just probably have a little too much out here, right? So if they go lifelink, they go up to nine and they play two blockers, they would live. All right, so just hit me for five. Okay, so this tells me they also don't have a sweeper. If we saw them go lifelink, you have to worry about the sweeper then because then they're just looking to go up to nine and then wipe the board. All right, two blockers. That's still six we're getting in for. So you have to have a cut down yeah okay they they just did that time they did not have it that was a fun match though all right now this is a curve and going first oh my gosh we'll take this all day soldiers you have to run any counter spells, and that's actually why I took them out of this one when we start seeing domain and control more I'm gonna have to put them back in obviously but all right, um, yeah, let's just go above that. And in this matchup, we're gonna be saving our Brood of Cathar. We don't wanna be the first one to use it. Unless it's the thing, like we play it, it wins this game or we're behind and then we have to play it. Okay. I am not attacking with a veteran, I know that. Yeah, I'm gonna go Harbin. And we're just gonna grow the Warden here. No attacks. You know they have something. I'm gonna assume Resolute Reinforcement. You know, I think I actually like the Sentinel, so I'll keep that on top. Would love one of my other three drops over that, but given any random card, okay. Get lost. I was not expecting the removal. That's fine. So, a veteran though, I mean, right? We're getting close. Oh, nice. We tap ourselves down. Okay. So this might be a situation where the Brutal Cathar is necessary, but let's be greedy. Soldier. I'm thinking just a Harbin, right? You can't Brutal Cathar my Roaming Throne. You don't want Call to attack in because we're too big. Okay, now they will. Now we'll have to trade with it. Okay. So I'm going to go with the initiative because that will be able to kill my roaming throne. And we'll just get rid of one of these. Still have two mana available. There's a little pause there. Okay, Anna Kellen comes in tapped. We just got to shrink a call. And Vanguard, I guess for now. Part of me wanted to just take the token, but. We need, I think I need Roaming Throne back to block Kellen if it comes in.
Because if they have a Brood of Cathar of their own, yeah, I think just here. Because then what's going to happen is they're going to get both back. I don't want them to just swing in with Kellen, find a card, grow their Pakal. I need to at least be able to punish them by killing their Kellen. And we're totally fine if we could make it to our upkeep, because at least we have the Sentinel in hand. Okay, Adeline. We can live with that. Wow. Okay. They get a, a second. Okay, not bad. They lose a Kellen, they get a Kellen. Fun matchup with Selesnya humans. I'm wondering if they're running the Angel 2 for their deck or are they just lightly splashing green just to be able to get the map tokens? Wow. Okay, grow your Adeline, but less creatures on board? I don't know if I agree with that play. Unless they just have to have the Brood of Cathar. They're just hunting for that right now. Oh, that's huge too. Veteran, yeah, we keep that. And who else needs to grow? Adeline is gonna get in on us. Oh, maybe I should have done both on the Warden? Darn, I would have had the, the bonuses. Okay, yeah, that was a mistake. Well, now that I've made it. All right, we swing in like this. Realistically, we could go Soaring City. I'm still waiting on in case they have a Brood of Cathar. That's the thing that could... Actually, I mean, I did just flip it, so... All right, so we'll... We'll bounce their Adeline then. I'm just going to do it right now. I don't want him to look at the top card, get an extra land. Let him play it, that's fine. They're about to die here. Okay, next Kellen. So we can double drop and flip it back to night as well. Or flip it back to day. Oh, they did it for us, oh geez. All right, yeah, that's game over. I think they forgot about doing the double drop right there. All right, looks like this might be game three against Mono Red to get us to our next level. Don't love the double blue, but it really doesn't matter. As long as in this deck you have one planes, one island, you're good. The only thing is you would like to at least later on double drop, right? Say we draw another one of our one drops. We now won't be able to play both of them here. Yep, there's the Mono Red. Siege Veteran is going to be huge in a matchup like this. Okay, we like that though. Fortunately, no big two drops. So we just got to get this down. Siege Veteran is going to grow them. And then they become decent blockers too, because then we still at least get a 1-1 one -one out of the deal. Turn after that, Roaming Throne, lots of counters. Yep. Right now, we're technically the slider beatdown. I'm going Siege Veteran. The only reason I'm doing that is in case they have um, Squee. I want an easy block on Squee, so they have Godric, okay. We'll do that now. Yes, they get to find some cards. Was that a, uh, okay. Oh, they took the land? That's interesting. That tells me they must already have it. Soldier. One counter. And one counter. And then we'll swing in with just two. Because now when this blocks Godric, we could trade, get a 1-1 one -one out of the situation. All right, I like that. 
and they go full send at me, we have it. We have the crack back. Which almost there was a part of me. Maybe we get in, we drop him to six. We just have a, the throne as the blocker. Okay. They do take care of that. They have a land to play. They're not going to be happy with their blockers. Okay. I mean, they were technically still in the game. It wasn't over, but they were going to have to block with our Godric and lose it to actually still even be in that game, right? Maybe they had a one drop, but if they didn't, then what is this? Eight, 10 damage coming through, forces them to block. Technically, yes, you could block and trade, but do you really want to take seven drop to two? So that's the problem with the Phoenix Chick not being able to block right there. So easy rank up. All right, we'll keep this. Just need a third land at least. All right. So easy rank up there. We got three mono red decks to go against and just a great matchup usually for us. It's a great matchup for, ooh, okay. Unfortunate. It's a great matchup for mono white humans or the human decks. So same thing applies here. We don't have the life gang they have. All we have is the Denic and maybe the Denic doesn't belong. I have it in here because of mono red and yet we're still being able to take care of them. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, Siege Veteran. See if they have to cut down right now. Ooh, definitely should have used it immediately. Yeah, you can't touch the Veteran now. You could touch, yes, there it is. Okay, we get a 1-1 one, one out of the deal, which is why they should have done it beforehand. And I'm not going to attack in. No attack. I want the scry. Oops. I want to land for the roaming throne and we get it. Okay. Only question is, will the veteran still be alive for that to happen? Oh, brutal. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, soldier. There's some deck tech. How often do you see that? And this tells me now we're against Esper Control, I would assume. Well, maybe not. I guess Esper Legends, all your creatures. No, we're, we're, we're in control here. Because of that, I'm not just going to walk into the Sunfall. I'm going to wait. Memory Deluge. Just no benefit right now to drop anything else. If we get a land, we could at least double drop the next turn. Hit him in here for nine. Forces. I mean, doesn't force a sweeper. You could just have spot removal, but pretty close to it. And this is the, considered a bad matchup for us because I put in Denix instead of the counter spells. Because I put in our Sentinels to be able to bounce some of my spells. Oh, wow, that's nice. Wow, another March and a Virtue. That is a lot. The fact they did that though, tells me you do not have a sweeper. I'm putting a gamble on it. But why would you, if you, right, if you, okay, they could have a six mana sweeper. That is, of course, possible. Get our scry, no. Because, I mean, look at that. That is some life gain. Another march and another virtue. You would definitely want to use that. Okay, path peril. That's what they use for their sweepers. We're, we're close to done then. Let's go another roaming throne. Soldier. That way it could be a 6-6 six, six next turn. Not quite lethal, but if we find, let's say we find a veteran and then the siege veteran go down, that will, will be lethal. The ward, okay. Now we go siege veteran and we could actually protect it. They're up at 11 now. Two, four, six, seven. They can now flash back Memory Deluge. Yeah. I think I still have to just play this safe and slow. 
I don't think six damage is worth falling into a sweeper. Okay. Would have been a pretty nice hit though. We would have dropped him to three right now. Celestis. They don't sweep. Okay. Do they have the counter in hand too? Wow. This provides lethal now for us. Memory Deluge, not enough. What a good victory this one was. I can't believe Memory Deluge, what, twice? Oh no, it's not over. You could have cut down. Okay. So we got to put it out. Yep, they have it. Wow. Just the card they need. All right, so we'll get them down to two. You could turn Memory Deluge. I mean, what are you going to find? You need two removal spells? You have to cut this down first. And then you still need cut down. Did they do it? Wow, nice. Unbelievable. Okay, they did it. So we just double drop again. Put the pressure on, right? Because now we're forcing a sweeper or we're for forcing a double kill spell again. Every time. This opponent. The force is strong with this one. Okay, so now you have to have a sweeper because you can't target my Brutal Cathar. Jace still can't target it, so that's game. I'll take note. Good game. What a battle that one was. Welcome back and not bad for the first half of the video. We ended up going seven and one and the one matchup we lose is another Azoria Soldiers deck. So the whole point of this video is to kind of show you, this is a deck I select to play if I wanna get some extra wins, when I wanna push myself and make that run for Mythic. So I think by losing to another Azoria Soldiers deck kind of proves the point. It is a good deck. We beat everything else out there and it had such good matchups when we were going against Mono White, when we were going against the Mono Red, of course, okay? Now Mono White, of course is going to be those tricky matchups, right? It's coming down first to that Brutal Cathar battle, but then it falls into, we have the Flyers, we have the Harbin to go over the top at the end as well. And even without the Harbin, having the Sentinel and having your stri or Sky Strike Officer, those things might be enough just to go over the top. And then maybe we end up with the Roaming Throw and, and we win that Brutal Cathar battle. So we just have so many more versions of ways to actually beat them than they have to beat us. So really good representation, I think, of gameplay. Now, I know this is gonna be a little shorter as far as the outro goes, I'm not giving it a jitsu belt yet. So you're gonna have to stay tuned for tomorrow's video where I'm gonna do a much larger outro, kind of explain everything, talk about our overall run, and I'll assign it its jitsu belt at that point as well. So please make sure you stay tuned for that video to watch our final push up to Mythic. And until then, never forget, you're an ace.